right, folks, let, let me deal with uh, this, uh, this issue of identity politics. Now, we've heard a lot of folks, Senator Bernie Sanders, talking about this in the wake of Democrats losing in November. Uh, but Bill Maher was recently on uh, CNN with Jake Tapper, and the issue came up, and here's what Bill the uber-liberal had to say. You said on your show that liberals need to stop trying to win over Trump voters with facts. So what should Democrats do to win over Trump voters? <laughs> uh, well, I was just going to say, a bit of it should be ease up on the identity politics. Uh, they pulled off quite a neat trick in 2016. They, they made white people who are still <laughs> the majority in this country feel like a minority, or at least enough of them to swing the election. Um, so I think I think that's important to make make sure you you look like you represent everybody, including the majority, uh, and also go where the energy is in the party. Hillary is a lovely lady, but she couldn't fill the function room with the Olive Garden, and there was a 74-year-old man who was getting crowds of 20,000 young people to come see him. Uh, rallies matter. All right, folks, let's sort of break this thing down. See, anytime you hear somebody bring up identity politics, okay, what they're really talking about is when you have groups out there who are fighting for rights long ignored. If you go back to the black freedom movement, some folks call it the civil rights movement, that's really when identity politics, uh, well that phrase uh, really was coined, was established, because you had African Americans who were fighting for their rights. Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, CORE, NAACP, National Urban League, the Big Six, National Congress of Negro Women, all of them were actually doing that. And so the critics then use that against them by saying, oh my goodness, you're practicing identity politics. Politics. But here's the problem with that. Anytime that phrase is used, it's always used if you're not talking about white people. But the reality is, identity politics also includes white people. We saw that during this election. Anytime you heard working class, they were not talking about black people. Whenever you hear somebody say, ooh, the working class in Ohio and Pennsylvania and Wisconsin and the steel mills, they were not talking about us. They didn't show us. It was always aggrieved whites who said, oh my God, we're looking at all these things that are happening for black people, uh, for Latinos and others. Let me also help you out with something. Shortly after the election, Thomas Edsel with the New York Times wrote a piece where he talked about this whole notion of white voters and how they view the issue of politics. They broke down some poll data after the Reagan Revolution in 1984. They went to Macomb County, Michigan. They went to all of these places in the Midwest, these Rust Belt states. But you also see the heartland, the flyover states. What they're actually saying is places where black people don't live. And here's what he said in 1984. They went in and the folks there said, the Democrats have done too much for black people. Y'all, this is in 1984. But take it back about 20 years. The exact same thing was said in the wake of the civil rights movement. And you know what? We're good. Y'all have done enough for them. What about us? In fact, let me take it further. If you go back to the period of Reconstruction, the 12 years after the Emancipation Proclamation, after 244 years of slavery, after about five or six years, whites said in America, ah, you know what? We pretty much done enough. We're tired of this Reconstruction stuff. After the 13th Amendment was passed, after the 14th Amendment was passed, after the 15th Amendment was passed, and all of a sudden it began to wane. When the Reconstruction end, the Great Compromise of 1877. And guess what happened? Federal troops pulled out of the three southern states. That's when Jim Crow began. So we've always had this period in our history where whites have said, all right, y'all got enough. But remember, President Barack Obama, just one year or two years into his term, CBS did a poll, asked the Tea Party their thoughts. 25% of them said he's done way too much for black people. I'm sorry, I was still looking for what he did for black people in the first year or two. See, so what you have to understand is, anytime you hear this phrase, oh, too much identity politics, what they're saying is, look, stop talking about black stuff. Stop talking about criminal justice reform and mass incarceration. Stop talking about income inequality because we white people are suffering so much. But here's the deal. When you hear that phrase again, focus on the economy, focus on the working class. 
well, are we not included? When Donald Trump talked about saving jobs of carrier in Indiana, did you realize that 50% of the people who worked at that particular plant in Indiana were African American? No, you didn't know that. Because see, that was called saving working class jobs. But if you talk about the fact that African Americans have $5,000 when it comes to wealth, and the average white family has $110,000 in wealth, that's called identity politics. Well, check this out. When Senator Bernie Sanders was on a particular panel after the election, he was talking about, you it can't just be vote for me because I'm a woman, vote because I'm Latina or I'm black, which is all true. But this is what he said, quote, in other words, one of the struggles that you're going to be seeing in the Democratic Party is whether we go beyond identity politics. See, here's the problem. Senator Bernie Sanders has identified identity politics as saying, vote for me because I'm black. He's ignoring the issue. See, he wants to focus on class. You can't deal with class unless you deal with race. Because if you ignore race in class, then all you're doing are talking to white folks and not talking about black people. And so Bill Maher is the same way. But let me help you all out who saw this coming. Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Go back and read his book, Chaos or Community, Where Do We Go From Here? He said in that book, written in 1967, which was his worst selling book in his life, and America didn't want to read that book. He said it didn't cost America much to allow us to go to hotels and to sw swim in swimming pools and to go to parks and to sit in restaurants. He said now, America has to write that check. And he said, you know what? Guess who will abandon us? Our white allies. He said our white allies will say, okay, y'all have gotten enough. Yes, the same Dr. King who folks have used as a bobblehead when it comes to his birthday in Black History Month said that. See, so it's no shock that a Bob Beckel or Bill Maher or Senator Bernie Sanders would have this particular view. The reality is this here. If you're Bill Maher and you're saying, okay, ease up on identity politics, Bill, let me remind you of something. Who voted at a higher rate than any group in America in 2008? Black women. Who voted at a higher rate in 2012 than any group in America, Bill? Black women. Who is the base of the Democratic Party? Black people. Who is the emerging secondary base of the Democratic Party? Hispanic slash Latinos. My advice to you is not to ignore those folks. Because if you do, if you start saying, oh, identity politics is irrelevant, then you're going to tick off those very African American and Hispanic millennials who will not vote in the next election. But also, let me say this here. I need folks like Bill Maher to stop playing the game because there's a thing called white identity politics. And we have seen it. I have been telling y'all since 2009 that we are living in the age of white minority resistance. Even though this election, 70% of the elect electorate was made up of whites, even though we saw that, there's a belief in this country that whites are being attacked, we're losing our rights. But that's not what's going on here. What's going on here is America is changing. By 2044, no one group will be a majority in this country. Whites will make up 47% of the majority in this country. What you have to understand is that's the real fear. The real fear is that African Americans have been going to college. Black women go to college more than anybody else in this country. The real fear is you're seeing the economic gains of Latinos at the expense of somebody else. Let me give you another history example. 1940s, there was a fierce race war in Detroit. You know why? Because Ford Motor Company and the other companies were looking to hire black people. White workers did not want to see African Americans getting those jobs. You had a fierce race war in Detroit, as well as in Chicago, over the issue of housing, public housing. What you have to understand, folks, is that when you see all of these attacks on identity politics, and what Bill Maher says, hey, focus on the majority, what they're actually saying is, stop talking about police abuse. Stop talking about police reform, because focus on my job, my white job. That's what I want you to focus on. But here's my last point, Bill Maher, and Bob Beckel, and even Senator Bernie Sanders. If you study the history of America, wherever you've seen black progress, you've seen white progress. Ask white women who benefited from Title IX. 
Title IX was not about sports. It was about opening up the professional schools for women to become engineers, doctors, lawyers, professors. And guess who that benefited? White women. Where does Title IX come from? It's a provision of the 1964 Civil Rights Act. Who made that possible? Black folks. If you're Vietnamese and you like voting in your language on a ballot, who should you think? Black people. Do you know why? That's a provision of the 1965 Voting Rights Act. Oh, if you're disabled in America and you like those ramps and you appreciate the changes when it comes to the American with Disabilities Act, you might want to thank black people. Do you know why? That came from the 1964 Civil Rights Act. If you're gay and lesbian and you like having same-sex marriage, thank black people. Why? 14th Amendment, Equal Protection Clause, one of the Reconstruction Amendments. If you look at even the period of Reconstruction, whites advance economically and educationally because of the laws put in place by black people. If you're white in America and you see now body cameras, those protect you too. If you see the fight against mass incarceration, that's protecting you who are white who are now using meth. Now you have whites who are saying, oh, don't put our kids in jail because of opioids. Well, thank the black folks who went to jail fighting the very laws when it came to crack. My point is this here. Identity politics has made America a better nation, a more perfect union. So Bill Maher, you might want to read some history. Bob Beckel, you might want to read some history. And Senator Bernie Sanders, you might want to stop ignoring black media like you did during the election, because maybe that's one of the reasons why you lost, because you ignored the actual folks who make it possible for Democrats to win. A peaceful protest turned deadly. 37-year-old black man was shot and killed by Baton Rouge police. His hands are in the air, and you still get shot by the cops. Oh my God, please don't tell me he's dead. We're not gonna let hate define us. Race is a big part of this. If truly all lives matter, then all lives need to matter equally. What we require is action. What we require is accountability. We understand that black lives do matter. And we will keep focused on this issue. News One Now, every weekday morning at 7 on TV One.